What is going on with Marvel? They are just making the worst decisions over and over. They honestly, they just need to literally just fire everyone. Just fire everyone all the way down, all the way from the top down to the lowest level person, the person that sweeps the lots. I'm talking about the MCU, not Marvel Comics. That's a different story. But they just need to get rid of everyone because the rot is in there. If they just fire some few people here and there, some key players or something like that, that's not going to help them. They need to just get rid of everyone because there's people making decisions that are just terrible, terrible, terrible. So the Blade movie that's, you know, was supposed to be made ages ago and is never going to be made. Apparently, it just came out that <laughs> Blade was going to be the fourth main character in his own movie. That's what Marvel decided to do. They're going to push him aside and have some lady be the main character. And he wasn't just going to be the second main character. He was going to be all the way down to the fourth main character. Who makes these decisions? That's what I want to know. Who in the right mind? Like, now obviously they didn't make that. They decided not to do that. Hence why this thing is lost directors, actors, all sorts of stuff. And the main actor, uh, Herschel Ali, I think his name is. Anyways, he almost dropped out of the film because of this very thing, because they were going to move him to basically just a, an afterthought, a side character. Like, who's, who are they hiring? Like, oh my gosh, they, do they have no vetting process? Do they just put an ad out on Craigslist looking for a writer for an MCU movie? And then the first person that applies is like, have you written anything? Yeah, I wrote stuff in uh, high school for a class because I had to, because my teacher made me. Okay, good. You're hired. Like, that's literally what they must be doing. Uh, do you even know who Blade is or the MCU or the Marvel? No, nope, never heard of them. Uh, do you know who the vampire is? Kind of rings a bell. Was that Twilight? Perfect. You're hired. Like, the stupidest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Who takes the character? First of all, this is his first movie. This is not like, oh, Blade, you know, Blade number 10. We should, we should change things up. They've been a hit all this time. They're kind of winding down. We need to change things up. What if we move Blade and have a more prominent lead other than you know blade hmm, that that could change things up no this is the first one yes we all have blade in the 90s or maybe it was early 2000s i don't know um with wesley snipes but when you're making a brand new star of the mcu introducing blade you know what you should do you should have the main character who's on the title of the film blade be the main character blade should be in the movie blade i know i know that seems very controversial having the main character whose name is on the title in the movie who could ever do that it's revolutionary no so so dumb who would why would even that script even the idea I mean, once so, once someone came and goes i have this idea for a script and they're like okay you know blade you know it's been you know, pushed around and you know keep on canceling uncanceling all this kind of stuff you can't find anyone to do anything yeah yeah uh, so i have this idea for the script what if blade is not the main character hmm that sounds pretty good Johnson, get on that. Write that script right away, boss. Now, it's like they come up with these ideas and then they let the script writers write this. So the fact that it's even written and the fact that they're going to change it into like have a lead girl. Here, let me news flash. News flash. Here's a news flash. Did you know that most people that read comic books, play comic video games, you know, watch comic book movies, all that kind of stuff. Here's a secret. They're mostly men. Big surprise there. You know my channel analytics? 99% men. Yes, there are some women in there. And I'm more happily. I'm sure the women that do go up to those MCU movies probably go with their boyfriends or husbands or something like that or a group of friends or something like that. It's not the first choice. You know, Taylor Swift. Most of that was women that went and saw that. And that's fine. That's fine. People are into different things. Most people that watch the Kardashians TV show, women. It's not a bunch of men sitting around watching the Kardashians. That's fine. You know, so why would you want to, what, what is the purpose of that? You know the people that are going to see Blade? They're probably people that either like the comic books, seen the previous Blade movies. Maybe they like the actor who's won two Oscars. So they're probably thinking they're going in to seeing a vampire movie about a guy. And here's another news flash. Women that go see these movies, they like their character to be a male lead. It's very, I know, it's weird. Hence why Twilight is pretty much like a male lead through the eyes of, I think her name is Bella, Bella or something, I don't know. Anyways, th that's what they like. So, you know, guys want to see Blade. Women want to see Blade. So what does the studio do? 
We're going to change that and put a female in there. And here's the thing. I'm not against having a female made lead. I liked Aliens that had Sigourney Weaver. That worked. That was great. Metroid. If you make a Metroid movie, you better have Samus as a girl. Why? Because that's who she is. You don't need to change Blade into a woman. Makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. What is the purpose of that? It's just so dumb. So now Blade is now just some side character in this movie. Like, Mahershal Ali was going to uh, quit, and yes, he should have. He should have quit. Like, I would be upset. Oh, I've been waiting for this movie for 10 years. I'm un under contract, like, 30 years ago. I've won two Oscars since then. So what are you going to do? You're going to bench me. That's like, all of a sudden, all right, guys, we're in the NBA Finals. Finally made it. Michael Jordan, you brought us here all the whole time. We're going to bench you the entire game. You just sit on the sidelines. We'll give you five minutes. You know, that's old reference. Maybe you can do LeBron James or uh, uh, Tom Brady. Just pick... Pick, it, pick an all-time great, and you're just going to bench that person for the movie that you're starting a franchise with or supposed to start a franchise with. And it's just like, these decisions are so dumb. And in fact, there's rot all in the Disney MCU that's making all these terrible decisions. That's why the movies suck. And the, and the TV shows are no good. And I do not want to hear people say, oh, superhero fatigue, superhero fatigue. Oh, no, it's, it's because... You know, we just got so many movies and TV shows. We're burnt out of superhero movies. That's what we are. There's people that watch Game of Thrones, whatever, uh, and pick a TV show that you really, really like. No one goes like, I just watched an episode last week. You know, it's like an hour long. I don't want to watch another one. I'm fatigued. I'm fatigued. You're putting out, what, 10 episodes a year? 12, 22, if you went back in the day? That's too much. That is too much. I'm fatigued. I'm Friends fatigued. I'm Seinfeld fatigued. Those are shows that I like to watch. You know, I, I can't watch them week after week. Are you kidding me? No. I, actually, most people, when they watch a TV show or a movie, they watch one, and then they don't watch anything ever again for at least six months. Like, no TV shows, new movies, no nothing. No, there's literally people that are watching a movie, then watch another movie right after that movie in the theaters. There's people that are literally watching a movie every single weekend, every single day of the week. There's people that watch movies, and then they come home and watch another movie. They're watching a TV show. It's called entertainment. No one's getting fatigued. We you know what they're getting fatigued on? They get fatigued on the fact that you give them sucky content. That's what it is. It's terrible content. They go like this. Okay, MCU is great up until Endgame. Then after Endgame, a few gems in there, but basically not very good. And there's like, eh, the last one I one saw wasn't very good. And that's the thing is you interconnect every single one. So it's if you go from Doctor Strange 2 into whatever the next one was, I have no idea, Ant-Man 3. Like if you didn't like Doctor Strange 2, uh, 2 even though Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, different characters, people conceive it as like they're, they're tied together. So if one movie sucks and the next one sucks, you're not very pumped, hyped to go to the next one. That's why Marvel's, the movie, is going to do terrible. Why do you think Captain Marvel 1 did so well? Why do you think it did one over a billion dollars? Was it because Captain Mar Marvel is such a great character? Brie Larson, such a great actress in that role. She is a great actress. I've seen her in the room. Uh, I think she's nominated for an Oscar or one or something like that. She can act, but in Captain Marvel, whatever. Not very good. Um, not the role for her. I'll put it that way. Anyways, why do you think it made a billion dollars? Because everyone loved Captain Marvel, that's why. No, no, that is not why. It's because it was sandwiched between Infinity War and Endgame. And people were literally jazzed about everything and they timed together. So every Marvel movie is basically one giant movie, one giant TV show. And so they timed together and then like everyone had to go see it. Everyone had to go see it, that's why. It's not because the character's great. And then they're like, whatever. I remember watching the movie and I was like, yeah, it's not that good. And I text my friend, he's like, all about it. And I was like, okay, compare it to every other MCU movie. And they're like, oh, I put it near the bottom. There you go. So it's not very good. I'm sure there's someone out there that likes it. Okay, okay, that's fine. But majority of people did not like it. And they ragged on it and they're like, well, we made a billion dollars. We made a billion dollars. We made a billion dollars. Well, guess what? Guess what's going to happen? This movie's going to come out, Captain Marvel 2, Marvels, whatever it's called. And people are going to be not liking it and not even showing up to begin with. It's already projected to be the lowest opening of all MCU movies. And I get, unless somehow this movie ends up being fantastic and just blowing the socks off of everyone, which I highly doubt it's not going to, this movie is going to be abysmal. It's going to lose a ton of money. A ton, a ton of money. A ton, a ton of money. Uh, probably 100 to $200 million. I think the budget is around 250 and you know, you got advertising costs, all sorts of stuff. 
you know, I'll probably just go watch it just because I'll be able to make a video. Um, but I'm not hyped about it. I don't think anyone's hyped about it. Like very, very few people are hyped about it, but um, most people are not. So, so then you got Marvel just making garbage content pretty much. And just like, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, I liked it. You liked it. That's it. See, you liked it. You didn't love it. It wasn't a must see, whatever it was in, in one of the TV shows, anything like that. You know, She-Hulk was this, I don't know what's going on. Like, come on now, you can't put out better content than that. And, and I do not want to hear about superhero fatigue. If you put out amazing sing content every single time, you could come out with a Marvel movie a month, every single month you can come out with because people still watch movies. They still, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to watch anything superhero. I'm burnt out. No, they go to, for entertainment and they have a certain quality that they want to have when they go see a Marvel movie. And the fact that you basically make bad movie after bad movie, people are like, I'm turned off. I'm turned off. I'm just turned off by the whole thing. If you make a good movie, people will watch it. They will watch it. I mean, Spider-Man came out after Endgame and it made, did it make $2 billion? I don't know. Um, people love Avatar, uh, the, the blue people Avatar. If James Cameron came out with them more often than once every decade, I guarantee you they'd still make a lot of money if the quality was there. But that's the thing. It takes a long time to make these movies and make them good quality. So that's super fear. I don't even want to hear anything about it. Now what they're planning on doing, Jonathan Majors plays Kang, which here's the thing. People said, oh, you don't like Jonathan Majors. I have no problem with Jonathan Majors. I think he's a fine actor. This is not the problem. The actors are not, they're not bad actors. It's this, the script they're given, the direction they're given from the director is all bad. That's the problem. They have to say bad lines and they have to go in a direction of the director. I'm sure the director was like, do it like this. So Jonathan Majors, he's fine. He's fine as Kang, whatever. But guess what? Kang, the character, is not menacing in the Ant-Man movie. He's not menacing. So they're thinking of getting rid of Kang because he has legal troubles. No, it's because he wrote a crappy character. That's what it is. He gets beat by a bunch of ants. Why would this be a big Avengers thing? The Hulk could easily destroy him if ants could easily destroy him. So he shouldn't be, a, he should just be a, a throwaway villain. That's basically what he was. But you're building this whole universe basically off him as the big bat. Well, he's not menacing enough. So now they're thinking about getting rid of him because you know, there's some like uh, legal troubles with him and mostly because people don't care about that character that much. And so they're bringing in Dr. Doom. And guess what? Dr. Doom has to be menacing. If you can't get Kang menacing, and you're not going to be able to get Dr. Doom menacing at all. Because face it, Dr. Doom has to be, he's like the Lex Luthor. He has to be, he has to outsmart because he's not physically stronger than the Hulk. The Hulk could easily destroy him. So you have to make him and I, that's another thing. Who are the Avengers? Who? Who's the Avengers? I have no idea because they don't even know. Is Shang-Chi an Avenger? I don't know. I haven't seen him in 10 years in real time. So we don't even know who these Avengers are that are going to fight, you know, Dr. Doom or Kang or whatever it is. So I don't even know if I want them to do Dr. Doom because they're just going to ruin this. This MCU, who is ever working at MCU right now, they're just going to ruin Dr. Doom. You know, they'll make him, you know what would be great? Instead of making him menacing, Let's make him a lady. It's like that South Park episode. Just change him into a lady. It's literally like that South Park episode, which is so ridiculous. Let's take Blade, turn him into a lady. Really? And not even the second character, the fourth character, the fourth character have like an ensemble cast and you, uh, called Blade. And you, and you make, here's the thing. This is how you introduce a new character correctly. And if you want to have them in your own movie, you don't just take a character, push the main character to the side, and then you're going to like this character. That's not how you do it. You do it like Black Widow. Black Widow came in number two. First, you get Iron Man right. It's called the Iron Man movie, Iron Man 1. You get Iron Man right. Then Black Widow gets introduced in number two, right? You just put her in as a side character, a one-off, and then see how the audience reacts. Oh, we really liked Scarlett Johansson as, uh, as Black Widow. It's really great. Have her appear in a few more. Then she gets her own movie. That makes sense. Now, obviously, they bungled that movie and all and how they released it and on a bunch of drama. They're supposed to release it in theaters and then on Disney Plus at the same time, all sorts of weird stuff. But in any case, the end of the movie wasn't very good. But in any case, that's pretty much how you do it. You get you in, if you want to put a woman in there, if you want to put a woman vampire in there, then or hunter or whatever she's going to be, you can make her 
The first movie has to be all about Blade, 100%. She could have a cameo or something in it, but it has to be 100% about Blade. Blade literally needs to be on screen almost the entire movie. The only time he's not on screen is when they're showing the bad guys and they're talking about what they're going to do. So there's really no room for another character. It could be very small if she's in it. Then Blade 2 comes around. Then that side tiny little character gets a little more screen time. And then you go, okay, how's the audience reacting? First, see how the audience reacts before you shove this character down our throat. And guess what's gonna happen? People aren't gonna go watch it if you just shove some character down our throat and we're like, who is this? We wanna see Blade. And now we're watching some movie about some chick that we don't care about because we went to go see Blade. It said Blade on the marquee. So yeah, now they're thinking about getting Doctor Doom. And uh, then on top of that, they're like, well, we're kind of a mess anyways. Uh, why don't we bring back Iron Man and Captain America and uh, Black Widow? Aren't they dead? Yeah, well, yeah we'll, we'll figure that out. That's, that's not hard. Just write them in. And it's like now you just, now you take away the weight when someone dies. When someone dies, and then when Tony Stark died, Rob Down Jr., Iron Man, all that stuff, and Endgame. There's a lot of people who are sad. Why? Because in their mind, this is the end. This is the end of Iron Man. I saw him for the last 10, 12, 15 years, however long he's on screen. I loved all those movies. And now this is the end. And I, I'm saying goodbye to this character. And I probably won't ever see him again. And that's what makes those mo moments very sad. And like you feel it. Like you want to feel your movies. Like whether it be excitement, action, cool stuff. Like you want to... Like that, a good movie is something you feel. You feel. You don't see. You feel it. So you want to feel because you built up this character for 10 years in people's minds, movie after movie after movie, probably, I don't know, 15, 20 hours of screen time in between all the different movies. And then you see this character that you held so dear to you die. And you realize, yes, it's a person on the screen. Robert Downey Jr. actually exists in real life and he's still running around. But the, you, you realize this character is, is dead. Like, you won't see him again. So if you bring him back, you just cheapen the entire thing. The entire thing. And now every character you see that dies, you're probably going oh, to come back. It's not that big of a deal. Like, you don't feel as much. You don't feel it. And, and the fact that they're like, well, we want to make a lot of money. How can we do this? It just cheapens their brand. This is like bringing back dead characters just so you can make money. Why don't you, you have characters? Just make them good. It's not that hard. It is not hard at all. First, step one, fire everyone. Gone. Step two, hire actual talented people. People that are good at their jobs. Hire them. Step three, if you have a character who's in the movie and his name is on or her name is on the marquee of that title film, like Blade, Captain America, Iron Man, whatever it is, make sure they are the main person in the movie. Doesn't seem that hard now, does it? Anyways, I'm Ranting. Let me know your thoughts.